Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. I have recently started a restoration project for my copy of Space Crusade, and I know that a lot of people are going to be most interested in seeing me painting the miniatures, but I thought I would start by getting some of the boring stuff out of the way. So in this video, I'm focusing on all of the card components. That's the walls, the doors, and things like that. Fortunately, my copy of Space Crusade is in really good condition, so there's very little restoration work involved. I'm just going to very quickly go through all of the things that you might face when you're restoring a copy and do the few minor repairs that I need to do myself. First up, we need to deal with the doors. The doors are cardboard that go into plastic stands. They're pretty sturdy, even though they are quite thin, but there are a few issues that you may have with them. First of all, the big issue is that because you are constantly putting them in and taking them out of plastic clamp stands, you will occasionally get chewed edges where they go into those plastic stands, but also if you force a door into the base a little bit too hard, you may get a little bit of creasing, a little bit of crumpling. And we're going to deal with those issues the same way that I dealt with them in Hero Quest. First of all, we are going to press all of the doors to try and remove any creases, buckles, and things like that to make them as flat and neat as possible. And it's a very simple process to do that. All I do is I will spray my doors with a fabric freshener like Febreze. And then after giving it a good soaking, I will layer it between greaseproof paper and then press it with something really heavy. And when it's dry, it will come out neat and flat. The next thing to look at are the little nubs on the door where they have been punched out of the punch boards. You can just use a very sharp craft knife to trim those off. You don't have to, you can leave them on if you really want to, but they will look just a little bit neater if you very carefully go around the edge with a very, very sharp craft knife and just cut off those extra little bits. And then when you've done that, your doors are looking much better than they were before. You can see on this one I have here though, there is a chewed edge at the bottom. As I was talking about earlier, when you are putting the doors into the clamps, quite often you will get a little bit of delamination of the card, they will get a little bit chewed up and pressing alone won't resolve that. What we need to do is we need to try and drag that paper back down to the bottom of the door. And we're going to do that using PVA glue. First of all, we're going to put some PVA glue on a Citadel texture tool. Any spatula type tool will do for this. And I'm going to soak the paper where it's been chewed up. And then I'm going to very carefully drag the paper back down into place. And you have to be careful with this, you don't want to rip the paper because obviously the PVA is making it wet, it is going to be prone to ripping. But if you very carefully keep smoothing it down, you can restore a lot of that chewed edge and make it look much better than it was before. You can see here how the paper has been pulled back down to the edge of the door. And you just need to do that on any door that has any damage. And then once you've done that, you're going to get an old brush and you're going to paint along the bottom of that door. And what that will do is that will toughen up that edge and make it less likely to chew up in the future. And if you want to, you can actually apply the PVA all the way around the door. While the other edges of the door aren't likely to get chewed up in the same way, they are still access points for moisture. So doing this, you can just make sure that your doors stay in the best condition possible. If you want to, you can even paint the edges to match the actual sides of the artwork, but I'm not going to. And of course, as well as the doors, you have the airlocks, and the airlocks are prone to all of the same issues as the doors, and they are restored in exactly the same way. With the doors done, we can move on to the walls, and there are a couple of issues that you may have with the walls. First of all, you may find that above the door arches, you will get creases, and that is resolved in exactly the same way as with the doors itself. You will spray it with a fabric freshener, layer it between greaseproof paper, and then press it with something really heavy. I use a couple of large superhero books. And then you will also have some nubs around the edges that you can take off with a craft knife if you want to. And then also, the way that the Space Crusade board goes together, it's held together with plastic clips. And those clips can cause some damage on this edge of the wall here, and also on this top edge of the wall here. And you can resolve that issue the same way you did with the chewed up edges of the door, using PVA glue, a texture tool or similar spatula tool, and just very carefully teasing that paper back into place where it's delaminated, and then painting along the edges of the walls with PVA glue to help seal it and preserve it, and make it a little bit tougher for future use. 
it's all pretty straightforward stuff and stuff that when it's done you won't really notice you've done it but it will just make things last for longer. Finally we're going to look at the boards themselves and again because of the way they go together with plastic clips sometimes the corners of the board have a little bit of that delamination and you may have some slightly chewed edges where clamps have been attached and again we're going to be relying on PVA glue and our texture tool to restore these problems. So I'm just using PVA and my texture tool and I'm going to very carefully apply that to where the paper has been pulled back and I'm going to try and move it back into place as much as possible. And then once I've done that, I'm going to paint all the way around the edges of the board just to make them a little bit sturdier for when I clamp plastic onto them in the future. Simple stuff. With the cardboard dealt with, we need to look at all of those plastic clamps and stands. So I have here the plastic stands for the door. And there are several rough nubs on these from where they've been removed from sprues. You can trim those up with a craft knife if you want to. And then you can leave them as that if you want to, or you can actually paint the bases. And I'm going to do a very simple paint job on these just to make them a little bit nicer to look at. I've started by spray coating them with a matte black primer. And if we look at the texture on these bases very closely, you can see there are four large indentations on all of the bases. That isn't part of the design of the base, as far as I can tell. It's more to do with the manufacturing process of the bases. If you really want to, you can fill them in and try and match up the texture with the rest of the base. I am not going to worry about that. I'm just going to leave them exactly as is. And we're just going to move straight on to painting them. And to do this, I'm using lead belcher and I'm going to do an overbrush or a wet brush, which is a bit like a dry brush, but with more paint on the brush. And I'm just going to run the brush very loosely over the whole thing, putting quite a lot of metallic paint down on these bases. And this is of course gonna bring out that pattern, that definition, and also make them look metallic. I'm then switching to Nuln Oil and I'm actually using a Nuln Oil Gloss here and there's no real reason to use the gloss, I just tend to think that it has a slightly richer, darker tone to it even when you varnish it afterwards. And I'm just going to apply this loosely over the whole thing. And then I'm going back to my lead belcher and this time I am doing a dry brush and this is just over the top raised details of the bases for a final highlight. And once you've done this, you can leave it there if you want to. And I am actually going to leave it there because I don't really think these bases are interesting enough to warrant further painting. But if you want to, there are other things you can do. You could do a second highlight with a brighter metallic paint. You could perhaps turn those indentations into floor lights. And also you could do something which is quite fun and which I've done in the past. You could paint some blood splatters on those. I'm not going to be doing that because I'm trying to keep my copy of Space Crusade looking quite retro and quite clean, but some blood splatters can be nice. And I have done painting guides on blood splatters previously. So why not listen to me from a few years ago talking about how to apply blood splatters to metallic surfaces. And then we're going to do a blood splatter. This is starting with chaotic red. And, you know, because we're in the grim dark future, there's blood on everything. So we're going to do a blood splatter like somebody has come to a grisly demise on this platform or just to the edge of this platform. Um, so we're starting with the chaotic red and I've watered it down so that, it, that you will be able to see um, the, the metal colours through it a little bit. And um, you can get a little bit... Just think about where you imagine the injury to have been sustained um, and then sort of flick the brush and just be a little bit artistic and creative and just do something that you think looks nice, if nice is the right word for a horrible grisly blood splat. So that's the dark red. We're now going to go to dragon red, which is a lighter red. Again, we're watering it down. And we're just continuing, continuing the, uh, the layering up of the color. And again, this is just one of those things, just sort of do what feels right, do what looks nice. There's no, there's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. It's just, it kind of looked, looked okay like that. And then we're going to chestnut ink. Chestnut ink is, is kind of my go-to for rust. And also, you know, if you want to make it look like the, 
the blood has been there for a little while. Um, you get that sort of reddish brown. And I'm just going to use that to tie the colours together and also extend them out a little bit like the, um, the blood is seeping outwards from the edges. Um, and I've used this technique on, on swords and things like that. I use it quite often. Well, that was me from 2019, and didn't I sound like an idiot? But there we go, that is pretty much it for restoring the cardboard components for this board game. As I said at the start of the video, my copy of Space Crusade is in really quite good condition, so I didn't have a lot to deal with, but I have seen copies with really badly damaged doors, uh, doors that have been pushed into the plastic stands so hard that a lot of the paper is ripped off of the front of the doors, very badly damaged board edges where the plastic clamps have been attached, so you may have more of a challenge ahead of you than I did if you're planning on restoring a copy yourself. But hopefully some of the things I've gone through in this video, rather briefly I should add, will be helpful to people who have this challenge ahead of them. For now I'm pretty happy with how this is looking, and apart from repairing the box itself, which I will do in a separate video, it really is just a case now of cracking on with the painting. That's the fun bit. Hopefully you will join me for some of those videos, as we go forward with our Space Crusade restoration project. For now, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.